My name is Chuck Frisch with WDN Health, and we're going to talk about drinking water today. Normally, we get it from our tap, from our refrigerator filter. Some people even go on as far, like us, as zero water. But zero water gets expensive, man. We're going through like a filter of week here in Florida. So we found this online, the Zero Installation Purifier. It's a tabletop reverse osmosis filter. I've been looking for one of these for years. They're finally starting to appear on the market, and this one had really good reviews, so I decided to check it out. No assembly required. Just take it out of the box, put it on your countertop, and you're on your way to fresh, clean RO water. Plug it in. It does have a little plug in the back here, so make sure you get that out of the box before you throw the packing materials away. But this is it. It's so simple. It's amazing. Everything's built into the system. It's got four uh, filters in the back of it here. One of them is an RO filter. The other one is a uh, post filter, which is interesting. We'll talk about that as we go along. It's a real nice-looking unit, too. It's, my wife even approved having it on my countertop, and uh, she's pretty particular. It comes with a little small adapter. It doesn't take much energy. I think it was a couple of amps. Not bad at all. Uh, considering it has a full water pump in it. It's got two reservoirs. The one on the bottom is a two-piece assembly. And what this is, is you fill this guy up. It's about a, I think it's a one-to-one relationship, which is pretty efficient. So you fill this guy all the way up to the top. A lot of RO filters, uh, under-the-counter RO filters, have a tremendous amount of waste. This one appears to be pretty darn efficient. Fill it all the way up with your tap water. Hopefully your... um, your, uh, your, your TDS and your tap water isn't bad because that will shorten the length of the life of your RO filter. The dirtier it is, the shorter it'll last. They recommend changing them about once a year, which is terrific. But again, I'm changing these zero filters once a week. It's 15 bucks a pop. So you put the bottom piece in, slide it in when it's filled up to the max line, and you're going to look for a, a blinking blue light or a solid blue light. It takes a little bit of a there's no rails or anything. You just got to find the sweet spot. I looked underneath. I couldn't get it in right first time. I got all nervous and everything. Like there are tracks or rails in here. You know, we just slide it straight back in all the way back. You'll find the sweet spot. The next three times I had no problem whatsoever. Turn blue right out of the box. I didn't have to lift it or anything. Some of these get heavy. Water is pretty heavy. And for women doing this thing, might have a problem. Press the blue button and it begins the, the cycle. You're going to want to run two cycles to make sure this thing is clean. Make sure that the um, the uh, filters are all set up and primed and ready to rock and roll. And uh, they do give you this information in the book. And you just want to rinse it out with tap water. The first couple times you do it, just uh, you'll see a lot of residual in the filter. A lot of it's just harmless carbon. Uh, just take it, wash it out. You can wash it with a uh, dish detergent. Make sure it's real clean. There's a top reservoir, too, which you'll see which all the, the uh, RO water goes in. This is where it pours in, right up top here. And you end up with about, I guess it's about a half a gallon of water. I'm not sure on the number. I need to check that out. But uh, you'll end up with a a bunch of really clean, surprisingly good-tasting RO water. Your first time, it only came out with a little bit. It stores a bunch of the water in the filters. It just kind of sits in there for a while. So uh, this is normal the first time. The second time you run through, you're going to end up with a full top reservoir. So uh, you just yank the dirty. And you don't want to use the the water in the bottom because what it is, it's the... um, all the contaminants from your water are stored in here because there's really nowhere else to put them because it's not connected to a drain or anything. So you'll see this is kind of nasty, gnarly, dirty. Um, do you have to clean this? You don't have to, but it's probably a good idea. You definitely don't want to add to this water or reuse this water because that's going to kill the lifespan of your RO filter because this is where all your contaminants, all your junk is, all your lead, all your chromium, all the other stuff that shouldn't be in your water. So how are you going to know it's time to change your RO filter? Well, inside the manual, which is very easy to read, I might add, they tell you to test your tap water or your source water with a TDS meter. I use the one that came with my zero water filter. I found that my Florida water is a mess. It's about 370, some some higher in some places. And then, uh, then you test your RO water and you create a benchmark. Mine came out to 72 to 74. The reason there is stuff in the water in the RO water is because they add a little bit of calcium and magnesium in the post filter, which helps taste and also increases the pH. If you ever tested Dasani or even zero water, you'll, come out, you'll find that they come out a little bit more acidic. And a lot of people think that alkaline water is better for your body. Two thumbs up. Zero installation purifier. Tabletop RO filter. The water tastes really good, surprisingly good. Probably going to save a bunch of money in the long run. We'll revisit this in a couple of months, let you know how it's coming along. For WDN Health, this is Chuck Fresh.